The New South Wales Treasurer, Daniel Mookie, is preparing to hand down the state's first budget under Labor in more than a decade. Ahead of next week, the government has already announced a suite of budget measures, including an increase in coal royalties, new public schools in Western Sydney and a once-in-a-generation pay rise for teachers. What else is going to be included? Well, joining me live now is the New South Wales Treasurer, Daniel Mookie. Thanks so much for your time. First Labor budget in 10 years. What's it going to tell us in terms of your values? And are there any huge surprises here? Uh, well, it's an exciting uh, moment for the Labor Party, of course, to be handing down its first budget in just a week's time. What the people of New South Wales can expect is a considered budget that focuses on providing relief to families amidst a once-in-a-generation cost of living crisis. They can expect this government to take steps to rebuild our essential services and they can expect this government to take sensible measures to pay down Liberal Party debt and rebuild the public's finances. Mm. Shouldn't your first priority be housing and building those homes? And what do you make of developers yesterday that just said, um, you know, building that 1.2 million homes across the country is just not going to happen in five years. You'll be lucky to build half. Is that your reality too? Well, you, you can expect uh, a housing strategy that is designed to help people own their homes and equally to assist those who are renting in next week's budget. We have signed up some, to some pretty aggressive targets uh, working in partnership with the Albanese government, but we need to do that. But we what are you doing to meet those targets, generation. This is the whole point. What are you doing to meet well, those last, targets? Well, well, three things, Laura. Firstly, we have already uh, commenced an overhaul of the New South Wales planning system. Secondly, we have audited all government land to be able to find places where we can inject additional housing supply quickly. And yes, we are pressure testing major metropolitan rail projects uh, to ensure that if we're going to make an investment of this scale, we are yielding a strong housing result. In our five months in office, we've made more progress on these issues than the previous government did in the last five years. Well, not really, because those homes haven't been built and supplies the issue. And we have made it very clear that we want a planning system that helps bring more supply online. We When's want that going government to, be fixed? Are we to talking take a role do that in the market. Term? Uh, well, of course, Laura, we are in our first budget going to be making some pretty big strides towards bringing more supply online, fast tracking the construction of more housing. But we are upfront with people. It is going to be hard. We aren't going to pretend that this can be fixed straight away. For the last uh, eight years, we haven't hit our housing targets here in Sydney or in regional New South Wales. As a result, families are under pressure to be able to afford a roof over their head. Sure. As Treasurer, surely you would know how long you need to extend the life of a RARing for. Is that going to be in the budget papers? And can you tell us now? Uh, we don't want a RARing to stay open for a day longer than it needs to, and nor do we want to pay a cent more than we have to when it comes to this particular issue. But we are uh, and have already announced $800 million to be able to fast track the connection of renewable energy zones yep. uh, to the New South Wales power grid. That is the most important investment we will be making that will allow us to stabilise the grid. In addition to that, the budget will contain $1 billion for the New South Wales Energy Security Corporation. Yep. I just want to know how long a RARing needs to be Give the people of New South Wales a voice years? in the energy market. I just want to know about a RARing. That's well, uh, we are... We, we are starting that work now and I've sent a very clear message to Origin and I'll send another very clear message to Origin right now. This is not an opportunity for them to game the people of New South Wales. No. This is not an opportunity for them to seek to make a win for profit. This is the result of a failed privatisation uh, undertaken by the previous government. So is Had it the be previous in the government not sold a RARing for $50 million, we wouldn't have found ourselves in this situation. Is, it go is the cost going to be in the budget and the length of time a RARing needs to be extended for going to be in the budget? 
Well, the budget will be provisioning for the government's energy policies. The two principal uh, inclusions yes. in the budget, it means that we are putting aside $800 million to connect renewable energy zones to the no, grid but I'm just faster. asking about giving Ara $1 billion Ara to start the Energy out? Security Corporation. Well, I've got to say, uh, we, we're going to allow that conversations to begin. We're going to allow that work to start. And we'll have more to say about the future of the Araring Power Station when some of those conversations have taken place. Right, OK. So you don't want to drive up the price on New South Wales taxpayers here on AM Agenda. Got it. But we look forward to you answering that question when you can. Uh, finally, before I let you go, uh, Treasurer, we see emails about the cost of lighting up the Opera House for the King's coronation. Um, that was cancelled. Chris Minns cited costs at the time. He didn't want to spend up to $100,000 on that. But by cancelling that uh, when he did, did taxpayers in New South Wales still incur a cost? Because I understand there was a cancellation fee for that, if you like. Look, that's not the advice that I've received, and I certainly applaud the Premier for taking responsible steps to save the public money. Uh, all savings as Treasurer, big and small, are most welcome. Uh, the Premier made clear at the time the reasons why the government made that decision. Mm. I think we got the balance right. Yes, he made clear at the time, but now privately we understand that there was a lot of politics in this decision as well. It wasn't just about cost. Well, I think that uh, the proper interpretation of what uh, has been released uh, through freedom of information is that the political leadership of the government made a decision. That is, the elected leaders of the government mm. decided the government's policy. That's what I think the people of New South Wales would expect and the people of New South Wales will, of course, hold us to account for the decisions we make. OK, but it probably still cost a few thousand dollars to cancel it when he did, didn't it? Well, I think that we've saved money. Yeah, uh, but we it wasn't have, cost free. Uh, this is uh, what that I'm is saying. welcome in our budget challenge. Well, I mean, uh, Laura, that's not the advice that I've received. Uh, okay. And I'm glad that the Premier is taking seriously the state of the New South Wales finances as Treasurer. It makes my job just that little bit easier. <laughs> well, if you could confirm that and come back to us, I would really appreciate it. Daniel Mookie, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.